They also believe that the Father raised the Son back to life. Uh, Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Let me say it like this. They believe that God raised the Son back to life. Because remember, Jesus got the commandment from the Lord. He could lay down his life and he could pick it back up. So he got that commandment from his Father. And all these scriptures say that God raised him from the dead. So the totality, that's another proof right there that the totality is God, not just Jesus and his Father. Excuse me, not just the Father, but Jesus and his Father. That's God. Galatians 1, 1 through 2. Paul, an apostle, not sent from men, nor through the agency of men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Ephesians 1, 23, 23. He raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. See, and it goes on to say, and he, he puts, um, let me read this. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age. See, this age is the spiritual kingdom. That he, when he defeated the enemy in the wilderness, that he gave us the power of the enemy right then and there. It says, but also in the one to come. The one to come is the kingdom of God, which is where the sons are going to bring heaven to earth and kick the devil out of the second heavens, as it says in Daniel. That's what he's talking about there. Acts 13.30, it says, but God raised him from the dead. The union that they share as father and son is God. Jesus laid down his life as a human, but because of this oath, this commandment could pick it back up, and God raised him from the dead, which is both of them, and the totality of God, including the sons and the bride and the whole plan. When the sons are glorified, they too will be part of that union of God. John 10, 18. No one has taken it away from me. He's talking about his life. But I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to pick it back up again. There's the verse I was quoting. His authority was limited on earth. He did the miracles by his own faith. See, it says in Mark 11, it says, Have faith in God. And, and you can move mountains if you have faith. He knows all about faith. And he came here to earth as a man with faith, which is what we're supposed to do. And the Holy Spirit came upon him and did the miracles through him. John four twenty four, This is God versus the Father and the sons. See, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. See, it's not saying that God is a spirit. It's saying God, the totality of it, not just the Father or the Son or both of them. God as the whole. See, God is spirit, and whoever is willing to lay their lives down for the restoration of the whole, that's who God is. God cannot die, therefore Jesus was fully human on earth until he was resurrected, and then the Father and the Son together resurrected Jesus. Just as the sons are required to die to self, flesh, or sin. Uh, it says in Matthew twenty six fifty three. It says, "Or do you not think, or do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and He'll send legions of angels?" Matthew thirteen forty one. The Son of Man will send forth His angels. See, He has authority. Matthew sixteen twenty seven. For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of His Father with His angels. See that? Matthew twenty five thirty one. But when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all His angels are with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. See, he has his authority back. So he had to empty it to come to earth, but then he got it back at the resurrection. It says in Colossians 2, 9 through 10, For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form, and in him you have been made complete, and he is the head over all rule and authority. This is an excellent description of the risen Christ. And Christ is the sons included. See, Jesus emptied himself of his deity. Anything else that's taught is the spirit of the Antichrist. Look what this one verse says in 1 John 4, 1 through 6. It condemns both Unitarian and Trinitarian beliefs. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Here they are, two things. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess 
Jesus is not from God. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. So, number one, Jesus Christ came in the flesh. That means he was fully human when he was on earth. And if you do not say that Jesus is from God, then that is the Antichrist spirit. So, he was God before, emptied himself out, and went back. And anything that is, is contrary to that is the spirit of Antichrist. Jesus was spirit that came in the flesh, called us to him in that state. He was born of a woman's seed. He was not born of man's seed. Everyone that was inside of Adam had Adam's imputed sin. So they were separated. We're separated from the Father at our birth. So we have to be born again in order to be connected back to the Father. Well, Jesus didn't have that limitation. He was born of a woman's seed. So he received Mary's flesh and blood, and he was born with a soul, but he was not separated from his father because he wasn't born through man's seed. But Jesus was born as a son, led to the slaughter as a lamb, sacrificed as a sheep, buried as a man, rose from the dead as God. He was at no point fully God and fully man origin, incredible potential, and ultimate destiny. This is what scares the devil. See, God created mankind out of the dust. Human beings were made in God's image or likeness. When we're born again, we are given God-like emotions. God planned that those who repent of their sins and are baptized shall receive God's spirit after tribulation. At, at Christ's second coming, all of those converted, whether dead or alive, will be immortal, becoming sons of the resurrection. Okay, this is after the tribulation and before the great tribulation. Everybody is going to have their immortal bodies after tribulation and right before the great tribulation. And this is what scares the devil because he knows that the sons are going to be released with their bodies, their immortal bodies, because of their circumcision, of their heart. They've totally separated themselves from sin. The Father is going to, to uh, uh, combine with them the energy and the circumcision on a day that He has chosen because He has an appointed time. And those sons are going to be empowered to go around and do the same things that Christ did. On the earth. They are part of Christ. They are the sons. And they will defeat the enemy. They will pull him out of the second heavens. And he will be cast down to the earth. And they will defeat him. But after the tribulation. Which like I said. Tribulation is all about the souls. God wants to win as many souls as he can. Through tribulation. Right before the great tribulation. Because that's where the wrath is poured out. And, and there's no more turning back after that. God's first fruits will be rewarded with a place of rulership in God's kingdom right here on earth. The saints will become sons of God. See, the whole point of this whole message is he is reproducing himself. And those converted will be full family members under father and son's authority. Don't get confused be between the, the bride the bridegroom and the son, they're not the same. Jesus is the bridegroom. He is coming for a bride, a spotless, wrinkleless bride, and that is the church. And the and the bride and the church together, they form a man child, a a son. The son, according to Revelation twelve, is going to be birthed and and then um, the woman is going to flee away in the wilderness. So the point of, of everything that God's been doing, it, the whole plan, the whole totality of everything, is to produce sons. That's what Roman, Romans 8 talks about. And it shows that creation is groaning for the true sons of God to be revealed. Because that's the end. That's when the devil will be defeated. He will be defeated by the sons.